Hi. How you doing? <sighs> My name is Brad Paul Avenshine. And I confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus Christ is the Lord. And I am a sinner who is chief. I am saved by grace through faith. I came to the Lord by repentance, knowing and accepting the truth as it is written in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible to Romans chapter 3. <laughs> Uh, you know what I know? Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. Go there, okay? Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 18. Follow me along in the scriptures, in the King James Bible, the real Bible. We read, beginning at verse 10 on to verse 18, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now see, that's the truth of you. This is God's condemnation to you, lost sinner. When you accept this truth of yourself from our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, You know what it ought to do to you? It ought to destroy you. It ought to devastate you. It ought to shatter every little vestige of your pride thinking that you're a good person. See, this is what Jesuits like Edward Feniger conveniently skip over. And they go to uh, Romans chapter uh, 3, what, verses 21 on to verse 26 and they say that's the gospel while well, they sidestep this <laughs> and guess what brethren I'm a saved sinner but I know that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing I'm not a good person what is good is that the Lord Jesus Christ has saved me. There's anything good in I, a sinner who is chief. It doesn't come 
from the sagging skin suit. It is the Lord himself. You know, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. I serve one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? These three are one. And you want to know something else? I am what is called a King James Bible believer. You see this? This is the King James Bible. This is the real Bible. Okay? This is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, written in the English language for us English-speaking people. Okay? I believe and teach that the Greek and the Hebrew um, were there to, to give us this, the King James Bible, the real Bible. I have a video addressing that. Okay, you can go ahead and uh, look on my channel here. You can see and um, find out where I stand on this, okay? This is the real Bible. And I'm going to submit to you again that you cannot be a Bible-believing Christian unless you believe what God has given us, the King James Bible, okay? You cannot be a Bible-believing Christian unless you believe the real Bible, okay? Because these fake Roman Catholic Bibles, they're constantly changing and updating them, okay? Aren't they? And those who use the Roman Catholic Bible perversions, they don't even believe their little fake Bibles that they preach out of or read, do they? You could, the proof is in the pudding. They go to the scholars. They go to their commentaries. Instead of going to the Lord himself, Lord, teach me thy word. I believe every single solitary word, syllable, sentence structure in this book, it's perfect. I don't change it. It changes me. You understand? Turn in your King James Bible now to Psalm 119. Okay? Just just a few verses. We're going to we're going to go through here and just read a few verses about what God has to say about his word. And these Jesuits like to say, oh, it's talking about the spoken word. Hmm. Psalm 119, Beth, verses 9 on to verse 16. Go there. In the King James Bible, the real Bible. Go there. Come on. We read in Beth, Psalm 119, that's verses 9 through 16. Okay? Beginning at verse 9, on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. 
Go down now to Daleth. That's verses 25 on to verse 32. Come on. My soul cleaveth on to the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways, and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying. Hi, Jesuits. And grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of, thy, of truth. Excuse me. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. You want to understand this book, Christian. Uh, why don't you call on the Lord, you know, the one who wrote this, the true author of the scripture, and uh, he'll open your understanding that you may understand the scriptures. Okay? Okay. If you are a King James Bible believer, like I said, you believe every single solitary word in this book, every syllable, every sentence structure, everything. You don't change it. It changes you. Okay? You get it? That's what a King James Bible believer is. And if you don't believe the King James Bible... But say you are a Bible believer, but yet you're using the ESV, the New American Standard, the NIV. <laughs> you're not a Bible believer. Because her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Okay? And let me, let me also give you a quote here from this book. The Secret Terror Terrorists by this man, Bill Hughes. Okay. I do recommend you get this book because Bill Hughes's work on the Jesuits is very good. The problem is, Bill Hughes here is a Seventh day Adventist. And Seventh day Adventists like to say that the mark of the beast that's, you know, in the forehead or in the right hand is that stupid little Ash Wednesday cross that the Catholics put in their foreheads, right? Or the Eucharist. <laughs> and when you read this book, he kind of, Bill Hughes kind of gets into that, and you're like, Ugh, uh, you're kind of missing it there, buddy. But what he talks about, his evidence that he gives against the Jesuit order is wonderful. Backed by historic fact. Okay, but I, I, I want to show you something, okay? I want to show you something here. If I can find it. <laughs> uh, this is... Oh, okay. Let me read. Uh, now, this will be on page 14 and 15. And I'm going to be reading... Right here, I'm going to be reading this. Right here where my finger is. Okay, pause that and read it if you can, if you want to. And I'm going to be reading onto page 15 where my finger is here. Okay, right here, right there. Pause that and read it if you want to. Okay, check this out. Verbatim. In 1825, some 11 years after the revival of the Jesuit order, a secret meeting of leading Jesuits was held at their college, hello, of Chary, near Turin, in northern Italy. At that gathering, plans were discussed for the advancement of papal power worldwide. 
for the destabilizing of governments, destabilization, that's part of uh, subversion, who stood in the way and for the crushing of all opposition to Jesuit schemes and ambitions. Quote, what we aim at is the empire of the world. We must give them, the great men of the earth, to understand that the cause of evil, the bad leaven, will remain as long as Protestantism shall exist. That Protestantism must therefore be utterly abolished. Heretics are the enemies that we are bound to exterminate. Now check this out. Then the Bible, that serpent, which with head erect and eyes flashing, threatens us with its venom while it trails along the ground, shall be changed into a rod as soon as we are able to seize it. That is a quote from Hector McPherson, The Jesuits in History, Ozark Book Publishers, 1997 Appendix. Okay, here's that quote. Right there, right there where my finger is. See that? It's called, Yea hath God said. That's what the Jesuits do. Okay? Yea hath God said. All right? Now, I want to give you an example here by means of an uh, illustration. Okay? Now, turn in your King James Bible. You're going to like this. To the book of Acts. Chapter 20. I'm going to give you an illustration here, and some of you are going to find this amusing. Okay? This response is quite dated, but I haven't been on YouTube, obviously, for quite some time. Uh, different story. But Acts chapter 20, verses 19 on to verse 21. Go there. I want to show you something by illustration. Beginning at verse 19 on to verse 21 in Acts chapter 20. Go there. We read, Serving the Lord with all humili humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying both to the Jews, it is to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, okay? Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. <laughs> Belief toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, Brad, what are you doing? It says repentance. Oh, don't you know? Repentance is just an archaic way of saying belief. <laughs> now, repentance in context in certain places, you know, when you are saved, born again, repenting, yes, but right here, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The devils also believe and tremble. Guess what? Your belief is not enough. Oh, oh shut up, you Jesuit coadjutors. You come to believe by grace through faith, being broken, okay? Being broken. Knowing that you ain't a good person, knowing that you cannot save yourself. You don't come to the cross and say, Oh Lord Jesus, I know you died for me, for my sins. I'm going to believe on you and yada yada, but you know what? I'm still pretty good. <laughs> you, you love me. You died for me because I was worth it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Repentance is an archaic way of saying belief. <laughs> 
Foolishness, right? Yeah. You want you want to see something else that's foolish? Okay. This one here. Okay, now go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. This one is this one is great. You're going to love this. Okay? With that, you know, repentance is archaic. Uh -huh. Check this out. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 25. Okay? <laughs> You're going to love this one, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 25 we read in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if God peradventure will give them belief to the acknowledging of the truth. <laughs> yeah. But it says repentance. Oh, remember. Repentance is an archaic way of saying believe. Which, if that were true, which it is not, Jesuit scoundrel scumbags. Um, belief in acknowledging two beliefs. <laughs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. And now, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, you, come on. You know where we're going next, don't you? Don't you? First John chapter 4. Verses 1 through 3. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Now, okay, when it comes to mano y mano, man to man, when, you know, when you got the guy, when I have the guy like right there in front of me, when you're speaking to uh, persons, you know, spirit, soul, and body, in the flesh, when you're talking, when I have talked to people in the flesh, when they're right there and you're guiding them, the Lord is using you to guide them onto himself through the scriptures, okay? And you're like, oh, here, here, you see that? You see what that says? You know, have any of you ever done that before? Used the book to guide someone onto the Lord? He's using you. Through the scriptures to guide someone onto himself? Okay? Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that? Okay? A saved person is not going to tell you that is come is an archaic way of saying has come. Because, brethren, verse 2 Okay, is the smoking gun proof text to show you whether someone is saved or lost. And mano y mano, in person, I have never seen or heard someone who is calling themselves a Christian to to actually confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. From professing Christians to those who are, you know, proud protestations, yeah, I'm a Christian. Do you confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? Man to man, I have never seen it. You know the only place where I've seen people who are Jesuits 
able to even utter Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? You know, the only place I've seen that is here on YouTube, on social media, where they're hiding behind a plastic camera. That's the only place I've ever seen it. But when it comes man to man, flesh to flesh, I've never seen it. I've seen it here on YouTube by trained Jesuits like Ed Feniger. Okay? Brethren, listen to me. No saved man who has the Lord Jesus Christ indwelling within him or her would ever mess with that verse 2 in 1 John chapter 4 and say is come is an archaic way of saying has come nobody no saved man or woman would say that ah that alone that that Jesuit did proves he's a Jesuit And that Jesuit has gone on videos saying, like, of Brother Brian, that he's not a King James Bible believer. And Jesuit Edward Feniger says he's a King James Bible believer. When he changes the text of Scripture right before your face. And the people, I, I, I did not watch his video. I can't watch his videos. Because I get really irritated. Watching Jesuit Edward Feniger's videos to me is like watching, uh, trying to watch Final Call 07, Jean Boschoff. Uh, whenever I try to watch anything or listen to anything that that guy says, I get really irritated. I can't do it. I can't listen to these guys because they're evil. Because they have the Antichrist spirit living within them. And a sweet, dear brother, JT, who will not see this video because he's a very busy young man, he did a rebuke to the Jesuit. And his rebuke was wonderful, uh, spot on. He brought up basic English, grammar, sentence structure, all that. And, you know, just proved that, you know, Ed Feniger is a Satanist. The one thing that JT did not do, which I personally believe that he should have done, is hammer home the fact that Ed Feniger has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is a Jesuit. Came to the faith through the Catholic Church. He was a Marine, okay? <laughs> Quotes church fathers and stuff like that. Vehemently defends the uh, Babylonian, Egyptian, Catholic Trinity? And there are those out there who said amen to this Jesuit. Amen, amen, brother! See, another thing about Jesuit Edward Feniger, um, that guy has not lost his mind. He's following a script. He's doing exactly what his Jesuit masters are telling him to do. Okay? Brethren, you need to be aware of that. And look at me. You're an absolute fool. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. You're a fool. If you lightly esteem the threat of the Jesuits. Okay? Okay? Keep that in your mind, brethren. Absolutely insane. The guy changes the Word of God in front of you, and he claims to be a Bible-believing, a King James Bible-believing Christian. He is nothing of the sort. He is a Jesuit. Beware, brethren. Beware. Okay? I haven't made a video for quite a while. I've been going through some personal issues. <laughs> 
thank you to all of you who have contacted me, prayed for me. And for those of you who have contacted me and I have not responded, specifically a brother from the Northeast, a dear brother who I love very much, who I've never ceased to pray for, um, who called me and I never responded. I have no excuse, brother. If you see this, you'll, you'll see this. Please forgive me for not responding to you or calling you back. I have no excuse and I won't make an excuse. Because you know who makes excuses? Lost people! And I have no excuse. I don't know what the Lord's going to do with me here. Um, today is Monday the 9th, March 2020. To be honest with you, I had hoped to go to Chicago and pass out gospel tracts today and witness to people in Chicago. But it's raining out and I didn't feel like taking the train and walking around in Chicago in the rain. But uh, that was something I wanted to do. But, you know, thank you. Thank you, my brothers and sisters, all of you who have prayed for me. And uh, just thank you. Thank you. I love you all. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, I will see you in the next video, whenever that may be, whatever that may be. I don't know. It's not up to me. It's never up to me. My Lord Jesus Christ. If I were doing this, who would get the glory? I love you. See you later.